Hey everyone, on behalf of the foundational team, welcome to the webinar, You've Passed Foundational, How to Prepare for Academic Success. First of all, we really want to emphasize how proud we are of you passing foundational. And now that we have this interim period, we want to talk about some of the really important and useful things you can do to prepare for matriculation. OK, so we're going to start with an overview. You've passed foundation. Congratulations. What's next? What can you do between now and next semester? So next semester for our purposes this year would be January of 2026, the second week of January. So if you're watching this recording any time before then, think about how much time you have to prepare and what kind of things you can do that we're going to review today to truly help you be ready to go come that second week of January. OK, the most important thing you want to do is you want to finish your admissions process. So whether you worked with Meg, John or with me when uh, you were taking a foundational course or courses, one of us, whoever your instructor was, sent you an email titled Next Steps with the PDF with important information there. That email was also CC'd to your foundational advisor. Number one, have you read that that PDF? And number two, do you have any questions? One thing that you can do and absolutely should do is contact your foundational advisor with those questions to make sure that you're reading everything, signing everything that you need to sign, and to ensure that you do not have any problems starting your courses in January. OK, there is a really terrific webinar coming up with Trinessa Allen who is going to be your advisor slash strategist upon matriculating in January. You will receive an email with the link to that webinar in Teams. It's going to be held on Wednesday, December 4th at 1. I think will be recorded, uh, but if you're able to, we highly recommend attending live. OK, so now what we'd like to do is go to the ever important My Nightingale, which is a wonderful place for you to geek out and have some fun. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you now. Thanks for the uh, physical gesture and assist there, John. All right, everybody. First thing you always have to do, if you uh, look at my uh, colleagues' backgrounds, it says start your day at My Nightingale. And first thing you want to do when you get here, always start your day here, first of all. Um, secondly, come on over to this person, uh, the, uh, the symbol, this little person over here, and make sure that you are, in fact, logged in. If you see sign out, that means that you are, in fact, logged in, and you're going to have access to the full dashboard. Now, you might see some things on my dashboard that won't appear on yours because I have access as a instructor and as an administrator, okay? But you're going to, the most, everything here that's essential to you, we're going to take a look at today very briefly because what we want to stress is this is just going to be a brief overview. We want you to go in there. We want you to geek out. We want you to have some fun. You know, Meg likes to say, don't worry, you can't break anything. And that's absolutely true. So go in there. And, and just look at all the stuff that's interesting, that's applicable to your life now that you are a matriculated learner at, night, uh, my, at Nightingale College. All right, so a couple few things to point out. <clears throat> we'll take a look at a couple of these things briefly. Here you see on our homepage, the college catalog. Do you know what courses you are going to be taking? If you don't, remember that's something to discuss with your foundational advisor. If you do, great. Now's the time for you to go into the course catalog and take a look at those courses. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to click on college catalog. And the college catalog uh, is, a, is essentially a PDF. And it has 269 pages. What I recommend doing this went back to the last page I was on. I was taking a look at the course descriptions because even as an instructor, I find it fun to do so. I want to go back to the top 
because what I want you to see is that you have access to the academic calendar here. This is so important in terms of knowing when the college is going to be closed, when there are important dates where something's happening that you're participating in or required to participate in. OK, after that, you're going to have the ever important table of contents. We're not going to look at all of this now. Come here yourself. Look at the table of contents. You don't have to sit down and read 269 page document. You can skim and scan. You can go to the pages where there's important information for you. So for us, we know that we want to take a look at where the courses are. So here you see course descriptions. So you can go to page 201. We're not going to do it now. And you can see here how all the course descriptions are categorized. If you also happen to know the number of your course, for example, let's say you're taking Math 100 now that you've passed Math 90 with John, you can go and Google MAT 100 Nightingale College and this part of our college website where that course description is listed will come up, okay? We do recommend checking out the course catalog, but be aware of that shortcut as well for specific courses. Okay, going back to my Nightingale, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the library. And we're going to find that underneath our dashboard. Okay, we have a wonderful and amazing and incredibly talented librarian at Nightingale College. Her name is Diamond Clark, and you can read a little bit about her here. And what I want to recommend, okay, again, make the effort you have the time now is you click on this YouTube link, Welcome to the Nightingale Library, because Diamond in an, less than an hour is going to tell you everything you need to know about the library. And the library and its multimedia resources are going to be essential uh, for your academic success, not in one course, not in two courses, but in several of your courses as a learner at Nightingale College. So watching this video now is going to have you truly ready because we all know that when an assignment is due and you're working a job or two and you're parenting you, and you go into that mode of, I got to get this done. And you start to focus narrowly. You don't have time to watch maybe a one hour uh, YouTube video on the library. So that's why you want to do it now. So you're more prepared for those courses. OK, there's a lot of great stuff here. We're not going to have time to look at it, but please note that it's here. Um, find out about the books and online resources that are available to you. We're going to talk a little bit about academic coaching when we go over to the Writing Center. It's all, You can also access it through the library. Um, the last thing I want to look at is just very quickly is our da academic uh, database research. You, when you were working with, I, uh, if you took English 90 with Meg or with me, then you know a little bit about how to access the database research. You can go in here and again, play around with things, put in different searches and see what kind of results you're able to elicit. After you're done kind of looking at things yourself, write down what your questions are about the library. And then here you can put in your name, your, your email address, whatever your affiliation, whatever program you're gonna be in, you are a former foundational learner. And then you can share your specific question with Diamond and Diamond will get back to you. OK, so that's the uh, most salient information about the library. The last thing we're going to look at in academic in um, my Nightingale, and there's more than one aspect to it, is academic resources. Um, just to break up the talking, I'm going to uh, have my colleagues come in um, and um, John, we'll start with you. If that's OK, we're going to go over to the math lab. What do we need to know over here? Well, what you need to know is that you can find your specific course that you're taking. If you're taking Math 100, there's the cal College Algebra videos and textbook. If you're taking Math 220, that's the statistics one. And if you're taking a dosage calculations class, which those videos as uh, will, will also apply to other classes that are not called dosage calculation, but that involve these kinds of calculations. There are videos in here on almost every topic and almost Daily more videos are being added to this site. So if you know you're taking Math 100 next semester or statistics, make sure you're checking out these video resources. It's set up very similar to the videos in pre-algebra that I was sending out links to all semester. Um, 
They are broken down by the week and assignment section. All of that um, objectives you click in and there's videos for everything that you would need to know. Great, thanks so much, John. So you can see here what John was talking about here in accordion style. For example, we can choose here between 12 different videos, okay? Uh, that are going to assist us with this precise section from Math 100, just to give you an example. One second. Okay, um, now we're going to shoot over to the uh, Nightingale Writing Center, and I want to turn it over to Meg. Thanks, Paul. So here at the Writing Center, we have a lot of opportunities and options for you. We have, um, you can submit your actual written papers if you want to. You can see right up in the upper left-hand corner, there's the um, light green button. And so when you have a paper that's ready for submission, you'll want to submit it there. You do not want to submit a PDF. We don't accept PDFs, so make sure that you're reading all the instructions. And like Paul has mentioned, click on every single one of these. Open them up. What are they? What do they involve? Is this information pertinent or necessary for you? Think about the APA paper formatting. If you already know how to do that, maybe you don't need to look through it, but you might have questions as you start going through your courses. So you wanna know where these resources are. So we have videos for you here. We have handouts for you here. We've got their stuff on grammar. If you look back to the course, what did you struggle with most in, in um, your English course here? Go and Absolutely. find that here. That's what you want to do is you want to go and find those those videos and those resources here and learn about that stuff now. So there's also the academic coaching schedule. So if you want to schedule one on one, you can click on that. We have elective webinars in here as well. But here we've got the drop ins and these are for all of them, right? So there's library, there's technology, the English, the math, the different levels of math. So you can pick your day. You can choose as a drop in coaching. Or are you just going to chat? So make sure that you familiarize yourself with this because as you go through your courses here, you will need these resources and there's you're paying for this. This is part of your tuition. Excellent. Thanks so much, Meg. One last thing that we'll take a look at now that we talked about all the tutoring that's available from our professional academic coaches. Remember, this is not peer tutoring. These are academic coaches who are trained professionals with advanced degrees that will be able to assist you. Um, lastly, Meg mentioned that we have webinars on several different topics that are available to you. Um, when you come to the webinar recordings, and I believe that this recording will be also listed on my Nightingale, you can choose the topic where you feel like you need a little additional assistance. In many cases, we have videos that you can watch. And in other cases, we have slideshows that you can review. And in other cases, we have both the slideshow and the video available for you. So a lot of wonderful resources, everyone. Please take advantage of that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And you're just going to see on our slideshow some of the things that we've just covered in this first segment of our webinar. We talked a little bit about the course catalog, the importance of looking at the course descriptions, seeing how many credits the, uh, the courses are, thinking about how much work you want to do each week in relation to the number of, of credits that you receive for the course. We talked about the library, we talked about Diamond Clark, our librarian, and we talked about how you can contact Diamond, and we talked about the importance of watching that YouTube video with Diamond about how to fully utilize all of the resources available to you at the library. Meg gave us a great overview of the Writing Center and showed us the many options that we have. I mean, get in there and explore because there was so much stuff that we saw was available. Um, and it's really going to help you a lot every time you have a course in which you have to conduct research and or write a paper. We also, I don't think there's a slide for it, but we also got a great review of the uh, math lab from John as well. 
and the importance of you, especially looking at those videos for courses like Math 100 Algebra, like statistics and dosage. All right, so this next section, we're going to talk about technology. So Paul did a great job sort of summarizing how over this next month or so before you are officially matriculated and start in January, you have some time to get yourself familiar with My Nightingale. You should also do the same with the technology that you're going to be using or needing to use in your courses. So make sure that you have a computer that runs either Windows or Mac OS. We're not talking about Chromebooks. We're not talking about tablets. If you're on a Chromebook or a tablet, you might not get access to all of the things that Canvas course offers to you or that you need to complete. You just won't see it at all. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to make sure that you do once you have your computer is you want to download the Teams app. And you want to do this both on your computer and your phone. So oftentimes, uh, if you need help, Teams is a great place to get that help. You can do that. Uh, teamsing, if that's a verb, you can Teams your uh, Ask Foundational instructors. If you had a question about something during our course, you can still reach out to us if you're having trouble figuring out who you should speak to about certain issues, we'll point you in the right direction. You can also directly reach out to ask the math lab and ask the writing center, and they will answer your questions that are related to math or writing. You can also contact your professor, which is a great way to get in contact. Um, Make sure that you're accessing Canvas on your computer. Like I said, the phone is good for checking announcements in Canvas, but you're not going to get full access to everything on Canvas. If you are only on your phone, you need to access Canvas regularly on your computer. So those are the must haves. In addition, if you are taking a math class, uh, you're going to want to get that TI-84 calculator, especially if you're taking Math 100 or Math 220, because there are certain functions in Math 220 that you will not be able to do uh, without a TI-84 calculator. All right, so once you have the technology, get familiar with it, all right? Install Microsoft Office on your computer, okay? You have access, part of your tuition here at Nightingale includes access to Microsoft Office 365. You just go to Microsoft365.com. You log in with your Nightingale credentials and you can download and install Microsoft Office on your computer. Once you have those apps, explore them. Kind of like clicking on everything in My Nightingale. You're going to want to click on everything in Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Just get a feel for the ribbon across the top and what the various things do. OK, you also have access to these on the web and you can you can do everything in there. I just I like the idea of having the. Actual application on your computer in case your Internet goes out, you will not be interrupted in your work and whatever you save to your physical disk cannot be lost in the cloud or overwritten anywhere. So that's my recommendation for getting familiar with your technology. Um, also use your technology to communicate. So I already said it's a good idea to get teams and send messages to the people that are going to be important to you. Send a teams message to one of the resource teams just to test it out. Send a message to ask the writing center, or ask the math lab or ask the foundational instructors. Just say, I'm just making sure that my teams is working. And that's all you need to put in there when you start the next semester. Send a Teams message to your professor and just say, hey, I'm just reaching out. I'm looking forward to starting this course. Um, let me know if there's anything that I need to do ahead of time to get ready. Also, you should know how to submit an IT ticket. So support.nightingale.edu is the website to go. 
Okay, you can request. Um, it's sometimes not easy to see on the home page, but there's three bars on the left side that you click on and you'll see ticket there. And that's where if you're having an issue and you can't access something, you would submit an IT ticket. The last thing and probably the most important, so I'm not saving this for last because it's not important. It is probably the most important. Check your Nightingale email frequently. If you don't know if your Nightingale email is being forwarded to your regular email, make sure you figure that out. And also all of the things that Paul talked about earlier in terms of finishing the admissions process, there are documents that will be sent to your Nightingale email that you need to sign in order to start here at Nightingale. If you don't sign those in time, you will have to wait a whole nother semester. Okay, so make sure you're checking your Nightingale email. All right, it's a lot of All talking, right. but. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, John. Thank you, Paul. I'm going to talk a little bit about studying tips and how to basically prepare yourself to be an effective learner here at Nightingale. So one thing you want to think about is you want to create a study plan for yourself. You want to know when and where you're going to study. And this is this might take some planning. We take for granted oftentimes, oh, well, I'm just going to do it here or there. But if you have a specific space, a specific plan, it's going to be much easier for you, right? How will you study? What is that going to look like? Are you sitting down? Do you have a standing desk? Do you prefer to lay down? These are things that you need to plan. You need to figure out how long you're going to study for. You want to expect to spend about two to three hours of study time for each hour that you spend in class. So think about that, right? How long is that going to be? How long are your courses, right? Base your study time on the credit hours that you're taking. So Paul showed us the catalog. So you want to go look in the course catalog. How, how many credit hours is that course? So if your course is three credit hours, you want to spend about six hours a week on that course. So you're going to take 12 hours. If you take 12 credit hours for the term, that's going to be about 24 to 36 hours a week on coursework. So you are going to have to make sure that you create the time for that. So you have some options, right? You need to think about that scheduling of the time. It doesn't have to be all at once. You definitely don't want to sit down and study for five to six hours at a time. That's going to be too overwhelming. And we both know you don't have time for that. So you want to chunk the studying. Okay, you want to thinking is studying sometimes as well. So really consider that. Okay, it's not wasting time if while you're driving to work or something, you start thinking about something you need to do for the course. That's still considered studying, right? So make sure that you're thinking about the, the courses as well as doing the actual physical studying for them. Now, I have a tip for you. It's called the Pomodoro method. Um, and it's a time management method that involves breaking the work into intervals, which are usually 25 minutes long, followed by short breaks. And so we've included the steps here where you decide on the tasks to be done, right? We create that plan. You set the timer for 25 minutes, work on the task. When the timer stops or when the timer rings, take a break, typically five to 10 minutes. It's okay to take that break and repeat those steps until you complete about four of them. And now you've completed about a full hour's worth of work. So consider using that. It might not work for you, but if you've never tried it, it would be a good place to start. You also wanna consider prioritizing your time. So what I've included here is a parable about rocks and sand. And a lot of people are really familiar with this, where the professor asks his students to imagine that they have a jar. He fills it with big rocks, asks if it's full, people say yes. He then adds small, smaller pebbles to it and asks if it's full. People say, oh yes, it is full now. Then he pours sand into it and it fills all the tiny spaces in the pebbles and the rocks. And he asks again if the jar is full. Now the jar is actually full, right? He explains that those big rocks represent the most important things in your life, the unchanging things, family, health, relationships. If you're scheduling your time, it could be like the time that you actually have to work, the time that you have to sleep, your, your commute time, any, any of those kinds of things, the unchanging parts. Put those in first. The pebbles are the smaller things like your job or your hobbies, the things that could be shifted around a little bit. 
And then the sand represents all the little less important things. If we're thinking in terms of time, it's maybe social media, distractions, right? That fun stuff. It still has a space. It's still important, but we have to think about how we're managing that time. So the key lesson is if you fill your life with the small stuff first. So if I fill that jar with the sand and then the pebbles and then the rocks, they're not going to fit. It's, it's how you're managing your time, not necessarily what you're doing with your time. So make sure you're focusing on those big things and then those smaller things will fall into place. It's going to be very important as you're going through Nightingale, you are prioritizing what matters most. OK, and some of that is building a community. So you're going to need to socialize and network with your peers and instructors. It's just a, a, an important part of this. Right. And the more people you network with, the more opportunities that open up to you. So you want to network early and often. You want to reach out on teams. You want to reach out to your instructor. Schedule a one on one. You can do that through teams. You can do that through an email. Reach out to people. This is the time to engage. And I recommend that you reach out to at least one peer from your foundational course. So you have some kind of team, right? And by in doing this, you can then create things like study groups or chats or discords with your peers and form your own cohorts. So you can go through this together as a team, right? You want to be able to support each other. Plan a time. And if you decide to do a study group, make sure you're planning a time that works for everybody in the group. You don't necessarily need a leader, but you will need a shared plan for each meeting. You don't just want to go into it and just decide, oh, here we go. If, you know, if I'm going to go drive to Florida, I'm not just going to get in my, I'm in Michigan. I'm not just going to get in my car and just start driving. I'm going to look for the directions. I'm going to figure out where I'm going to stay. And this is the same thing. So you want to set goals for that meeting first, right? Is it a socializing meeting? Is it material sharing? Is it parallel work, right? Decide some kind of plan for that meeting and make sure that you're staying on track. Make sure you do a recap at the end of the meeting so that everybody has something to, to take home with them, right? And to, to think about for a while before you come to the next meeting, right? Have a purpose for them. And again, socialization is still a purpose. You're going to need to do that as you go through here. This is not a solitary event, okay? This isn't just you sitting at home and your computer trying to get everything done. You have a whole community of instructors, of peers, all these people that are willing to help you and make you be successful. So please reach out to other people as you're going through this. So I've got some best practices here. Couple of tips. I'm sure that John and Paul have some tips as well, but make sure you know how to find your student number. That is going to be super important. So do you know how to do that? That that will be the first one, right? Go and see after you're done watching this. Go find your student number. Make a list of materials that you're going to need for your courses and gather those materials and have them ready at least a week before the term starts. And investigate your degree plan. Which courses are you going to take for next year? How are those going to fit into your schedules? So really focus on this kind of managing your time, managing your life as you start to enter into this, pro this program. So in essence, we want you to be prepared for whatever obstacles you may encounter and understand you're going to stumble. You're going to stumble. You're going to, you're going to fail. But as we all know, the path to success is laden with failures. And you just get back up and keep going. So. That's what I have. I just want to add one thing to that beautiful statement that Meg said. You're not learning unless you make mistakes. OK, if you already knew everything, you're not going to make a mistake. So part of learning is making mistake. So embrace it. And good luck. Good luck, everyone. Again, we're really proud of you, and we will be reaching out uh, during your first semester after you matriculate at some point just to check in on you and see how you're doing because we care. Have a great semester. Bye. All right.